Hey everyone, it's Paul from One Cast One Fish, and today I'm going to show you how to remove and check the thermostats on an Evan Root ETAC. Now, first things first, let's get this cowling off. Alright, with the cowling off, we're going to have this upper cover that we need to remove to get access to the thermostats. Now removing this upper cover is actually kind of easy. It's just held on by a couple rubber grommets. So you kind of just pop them out of place here and pull this cover off. Now with the cover removed, we'll have access to the thermostats at the rear of the engine. Now the thermostat housings are going to be located one on the left hand upper and one on the right hand upper side of the engine. Let's talk tools for a minute. 13 16 deep well socket, 18 inch breaker bar. Now you're probably asking yourself, why on earth an 18 inch breaker bar? Well these thermostats tend to have a lot of corrosion and that's especially going to be true if you use a salt water application. And for that reason, the 18 inch breaker bar gives me the ability to apply a lot of pressure evenly. And that's because these thermostat housings are plastic and actually pretty easy to break. Now if you're out there on the internet trying to learn how to do this job, I guarantee you're going to come across the forum with at least one post that'll reference breaking, cracking, or rounding off the corners of those thermostat housings. And it's for those reasons, slow, steady, even pressure is the best way to go. Alright, let's get this first thermostat out. Again, 13 16 socket and breaker bar. Now again, slow, even, steady pressure. You're going to start to feel it move. And you're going to want to keep going with that slow, steady, even pressure until you pop the seal and you feel that thermostat start to come free. Now if the thermostat housing broke free, we can go back with our regular wrench. You will feel a little resistance because that thermostat housing is rubbing against the spring. Now we're going to remove the thermostat housing and you'll see that spring back there. We're going to remove the spring and thermostat. And now we're going to perform our inspection cleaning. So in our case we see just a little bit of corrosion build up. So we're going to use a flat blade screwdriver and I'm kind of just going to lightly scrape all that corrosion out. Being careful not to score the actual cylinder. And you can see some of that corrosion here that we're trying to get rid of. Now with most of that junk scraped out, I'm just going to go in there with a paper towel and kind of wipe the edges down. I want to make sure those surfaces are nice and clean. Now we're going to move over to cleaning the thermostat itself. And for the thermostat, I found it's best to wipe it down first with a paper towel or rag. Next, a wire brush to get any corrosion or deposits off the thermostat. Now one area we want to look out for while we're cleaning this thermostat is this rubber gasket. And we want to make sure it's clean, pliable, and in good shape before we reinstall this thermostat. The next part I want to inspect is our thermostat housing. Now there's not a lot of parts to this housing, so we want to make sure that all of our threads are in good shape. And if you look, there's actually a rubber o-ring here on this housing. And again, we want to make sure that's clean, pliable, and in good shape before we reinstall that housing. Now it's time to start with reinstallation. For this part, you're going to want a rubber glove. And that's because we're going to be using everybody's favorite triple guard grease. I'm going to start with that thermostat housing and applying a small amount of triple guard grease across all the threads. And that's really going to help us when we go to remove this again at a later date. And when I'm applying that grease, I want to make sure I get a little bit right here on this o-ring. Take the time to clean up any excess that may have got inside the housing. And now we're going to move on to the thermostat itself. We want to be careful not to get any grease inside the inner workings of that thermostat. So we're going to remove that gasket and put a light coat of grease on it. Now again, a very, very light coat is all that's needed on that gasket. Now we'll reinstall this gasket on our thermostat. The only other part of this thermostat that's going to get any grease is right here on the top of the spring. 
And that's so when we're turning our thermostat housing, it's actually going to be compressing that spring to hold everything in place. And we won't want anything binding up or moving out of place. Again, a very, very light coat is all that we need. Now we're ready to move on to the installation. To reinstall our thermostat, we're going to put it right back into the cylinder head. Make sure everything is seated good and holding in place. And we're going to get our top cap and screw it right back on. Now some pointers when reinstalling that thermostat housing. One, make sure that you're not cross-threaded. And two, you're going to have to push because you're going to have to overcome some of that resistance from the spring to get those threads initially started. Once we get the thermostat housing hand tight, we want to break out the torque wrench. One of the most important things when replacing these thermostats is making sure that you don't over tighten or under tighten that housing. With that thermostat clean and reinstalled, time to move on over to the other side. Now we're ready to start the other side. Same exact process. 3 16th socket, breaker bar, slow, even, steady pressure until you feel that thermostat housing crack off seat. And we want to keep on going slow and steady and loosening that housing up. Once that housing's loose, we'll go back in with our wrench and we're just going to remove the housing and pull that thermostat out. Now when I pull the thermostat out on this side, I noticed that gasket didn't come out with it. So we're going to go back in there and we're going to pull that out of the cylinder. Now I'm not going to bore you with this side, but we're going to go through the exact same process. We're going to scrape, clean, and re-lubricate everything prior to reinstallation. Now with everything cleaned and lubed, time to go back with reassembly and reinstall. Again, we want to make sure that thermostat goes in there nice and flush. And now to reinstall our housing. And again, you've got that spring pressure to overcome, so getting it started may be a little difficult at first. Alright, with the housing started, we're going to tighten on up again, making sure that nothing's cross-threaded. And we're going to torque it down into place. And that's how you remove, clean, lubricate, and reinstall the thermostats and housings on an Evinrude E-Tech. I hope you found this video useful, and as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below in the comment section. And we'll see you next time on the water.